I'm gonna show you guys the five biggest mistakes people make when trying to breed Dubia roaches. So let's go through to the video. For this video, I've got some. Ha I've got a hand. This company has reached out to me and told me they've got this new app on the phones where it helps you be more productive so you're not wasting time when you're filming and stuff. So uh, let's give it a go out with this video. Let's see how it goes. Now, from I've installed it all and everything like that, but I'm, I'm no good with technology. But it says, I have to tell it what I want to do and then it will basically time me to see how long it takes for me to do each individual piece of the actual video. And if I run out of time, it's just going to That's what it says. That's what it said in the video description. I have no idea what it means. So uh, we're going to go straight through with that and do it on this video. Let's start at our Dubia colony and I'll start with tip number one for you. Before I go into all that, it's just come up with a thing to say test test scenario. I wonder what all that means, but it says, press play. I've got four seconds. Three, two. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, did you see that? <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Oh God. Right, right, off to the Dubia colony. Welcome to Two Minute Tuesday. We're going to spend two minutes talking about this entire topic of the five biggest mistakes people make when trying to breed dubia roaches. Let's put two minutes on the clock. <laughs> there we go. Right, go. Right, so tip number one. The first thing people do wrong all the time when breeding dubia roaches is they use a water bowl or an actual water substance. Well, that encourages the dubia roaches to go in for a drink. They go in for a drink and then they drown. You do not want to drown your dubia roaches. So the alternatives are something like this, bug gel, water crystals. Me personally, I use fruit that has got a high water content. So something along the lines of apples, oranges, that sort of thing. Oh, 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 oh. The app says we've got two, three, well, well it's the clock's going backwards on it. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, this, whoa, 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 where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Oh, we've got 30 seconds to do this one. So, the next one, number two, the biggest mistakes that people make when breeding dubia roaches is, this one is quite technical, they breed dubia roaches with a high calcium content inside the dubia roaches, so they think they don't have to give their animals or coat the dubia roaches in calcium so that the animals can still get cal. It's a tricky one to follow, but you get the gist. They feed the dubia roaches on high calcium rich diet so that they don't have to cover it in calcium to feed to the animals. It's good thinking in practice, but the problem with that is if you feed your dubia roaches in a high calcium diet, it then makes the actual dubia roach full of calcium. Calcium is bad for a dubia roach because it's got an exoskeleton and it can't molt out of its exoskeleton. The calcium makes their exoskeleton extremely hard. Right, right, that was that one, right, two. <laughs> Whoa, this is thrilling, this app. Right, number three is two in one sort of thing. It's the amount of space that you provide for your dubia roaches. If you've only got, say, 10 dubia roaches, you don't want a tub this size because the males won't be able to find the females. By the time the males have actually got over to the females, the females have thought, do you know what, I'm bored here, like females always do. And they've gone for a walk somewhere else, or something else has took their interest, or they've seen something sparkly. Don't hate me, women. So don't have too much space inside if you've not got a lot of dubia roaches. Along with that goes the ratio of males to females. You want five females to one male, and that is the perfect ratio. If you have too many males, they'll start fighting with each other. And then if you have too many females, the females can gang up on the males and... <laughs> Now where are we? I have no idea where we are guys. I mean look, look, look. It's just it's just wasteland and stuff like that. I'll tell you one thing though, it's starting to get dark, it's a bit cold. I should have wait there, have I even got car keys? How am I supposed to get back home? Oh, 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 I need a jacket on. No, 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 no. Click, click, god damn it, click! Oh, that's a bit better, but it's still chilly. Let's ah no no no. If I've done that hand. Then I lost my t-shirt. What about this hand? That's a bit better. I'm getting, I'm liking this. Right, where were we? Where were we? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. 
make sure you have the perfect ratio of males to females and the perfect amount of space for them. Now, what should we go on to next? Let's have a look at the app, actually. Let's have a look at the app, see how long we've got left on this one. Oh, we've still got a minute left. What, should we just go straight on to number four then? Yeah, why not? Let's go on to number four. So then guys, number four is make sure you remove the babies. Now that's not a mistake or it's not, you don't have to. Remove the babies and then it makes the females that just laid the babies, it prepares them ready to lay again. If you leave the babies in with, with the actual females, the females will try and nurture the babies and protect the babies. If you eliminate the babies out of the picture altogether, then that female is gonna get ready, prepare herself, recover herself from giving birth and get herself ready to produce even more babies for you. And it's a great little tip if you wanna go down that line of mass production. So let's go back now and check the app. Right, right, we have, oh, you're just in time, just in time, five, four, I don't know where it's gonna take us to next, two, one. <laughs> Why do things always look putting me on the train track? Quick, let's get off the train track. Let's get off the train track. Right, 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 there we go, we're clear, we're clear. Oh, that was a close one, wasn't it? Right then. Well, we'll go on to number five now. Wait there, how long have we got left on the app for this one? Oh, we've got a minute left on this one, so this one can be quite good. Right, number five is their food. The food that you actually feed the dubia roaches. Now, let me explain why. A lot of people go down the line of fresh fruit and fresh vegetables and stuff like that. Now, if you're going to do that way, fair point, fair play to you. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, make sure it's organic. Now, a lot of food nowadays doesn't say organic on there. The biggest tip with that is, if it doesn't say organic, don't buy it and don't use it for your animals. I'm knackered all this running around and teleporting and stuff like that, it's killing me. But not only has it just got to be organic, you've also got to look at the nutrition factor inside the majority of those actual things that you are feeding. So lettuce, take for example, there's absolutely zero nutritional value inside lettuce. It's the same if you're feeding it to rabbits and other stuff like that. It's okay if you're feeding it to tortoises because tortoises can keep it inside their body for like two weeks and abstract every last little bit of nutrition out of there because the nutrition in lettuce is extremely deep. So I'm going on about lettuce far, far too much here. <laughs> you get the point. Nutrition is highly important. So fruit and veg, stuff like that is also good. I like to feed crushed up dog biscuit basically dried dog biscuit stick it in a blender crush it up <laughs> don't pay too much attention to that face then <laughs> that's what i use along with apple orange all that sort of stuff for moisture and stuff like that it works perfectly fine <laughs> i need to keep an eye on this app and this time i keep running out of time but check it out we're right by the canal cinematic b-roll So that was our two minute Tuesday feature. I'm just trying it out, figured it's something I'll try. Um, I've well gone over two minutes, so that's probably gonna become a trend on them as well. But every Tuesday, two minute video to do with tutorials or information or knowledge or something like that. Let me know what you guys thought. It's possibly the stupidest video I've ever done. And to be fair, I still, I still don't know where I am. I still haven't got my car keys or anything. So. Um, I'm lost actually. Actually, all this magic with the top and everything like that. I wonder if that'll work for the car keys. I wonder how I'm gonna do it. Do I say abracadabra? Do I just, what do I do? I don't know. They're probably just gonna fall out of thin air, aren't they? Shall we try it guys? Please keys, fall out, fall out of thin air. Hey, so I've got the car keys, but where's the car? That's the big thing, where is the car? I'm just gonna keep walking up this path. This is the normal path I'd normally take coming out of this canal section. So we'll see if we can find it, but I've got the keys. Woo -woo. So yeah, guys, you get the point, don't you? All these five mistakes, I've gone through them all. I hope you've followed them all anyway, and I hope you've learned something. If you have, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It really does help. Like, subscribe, and when you do subscribe, hit that little notification bell and click on all, just so you get notified next time I do upload a video. As for, this app, yeah mate, I want to throw it, but it's a valuable phone, I don't want to do that really, but <laughs> I think I'm going to uh, uninstall this app because it's a bit temperamental. Imagine if it would have dropped me in the middle of the canal. Woo! That would have been bad.
Peace out, guys.